Hello, my friend. This is the voice of your friend, Mr. Solution. In this course, I'll be teaching us how to trade futures on cryptocurrencies, otherwise called margin or leverage trading. So first of all, who am I or what qualifications do I have that should give me the authority to put this course together? I am a cryptocurrency day trader. As a matter of fact, I've been trading cryptocurrencies since 2016. So this uh, the experience I've, been, I've gathered all this way that have, have enabled me to put this course so as to serve as a guide to as many of you who are interested in trading futures but do not know how to go about it. So why this course? Margin trading is a very hard to understand course, especially when you are completely new to it. Therefore, this guide is for everyone who is new to trade to margin trading and for those who need to clear up some specifics. By clearing up some specifics, I mean those who are already into it but have not really understood one or two things about it. So the basics will be explained in a simple way that should be easy to understand and also by using simple examples. So first of all, I want us to understand that I am not a financial advisor. So I would always urge everyone who, anybody who is taking this course to carry out your own independent verification of facts and data that I'll be sharing in this video. Also, you should know that trading is an extremely risky activity. Your trades are your responsibility, so trade at your own risk. And finally, like I said initially that I am not a financial advisor. If you seek financial advice, advice, speak to a professional of which I am not. Okay, here are the course contents or here are the things we'll be looking at in this course. We'll be looking at the prerequisites to margin trading. We also look at the definitions and terms. We look at what margin trading is. We look, consider how to open a position, what is longing a position, what is shorting a position, and then how to close a position. We also look at what leverage is. We consider liquidation of factors that can cause an account to be liquid, liquidator, liquidated or what can make one to get liquidated. And finally, we look at how to calculate profits and loss in trading. So prerequisites to merging trading. Anybody who wishes to trade futures should have a thorough understanding of one, technical analysis. You should know what system development entails. You should know your risk management approach. You should understand trade psychology. And then finally, you should have a thorough understanding of the exchange you are using and the product you are trading. Definitions and terms. So what is a position? A position is simply your entry in a trade that point at which you enter a trade, that is your position. When we say that you are long in a position, a long position is a position where you aim to buy low and sell high. In other words, you're buying, with a, you're buying low with the intention of selling high when the price increases. To short a position is a, should simply means to buy, to sell low and buy high. A position where you aim is to sell high and buy low, okay? You're buying low to sell high. In other words, you're selling high to buy low, okay? That is a short position. I take it again, a short position is a position where, where you aim to sell high and buy low. And then what is leverage? Leverage is simply your buying power multiple. In futures trading, you have the advantage of using leverage. We, we all know what a leverage is. A leverage is something that gives you an advantage that ordinarily you wouldn't have had. So by when you're trading futures, you also have the option of using a leverage. By, by using a leverage, and a, a capital of $1,000 can be traded as though it's a capital of $10,000. We still go deep into that as we progress. Then what is margin? The margin is actually the capital pledged as security. Whatever your capital is, that is your margin. That is your margin. If your if if your capital is hundred dollars, but then you're using a leverage of times ten, that capital you're putting, that your own capital that you're putting into the trade is your margin. Then an order value, the actual value of an order. This is the actual value of an order. Actually, the profits and losses are calculated from this number. Then what is the other cost? 
the actual cost of an order. This is the amount that you risk losing upon liquidation. Other cost is whatever whatever um, money you put in there, when you now multiply it by the leverage you'll be using, that is your other cost. And then it is also the amount that leverage mult multiplies to calculate the other value, which I just talked about. And then the other cost is the amount you, you actually risk in the other. And other value is calculated approximately by multiplying the leverage with the other cost. Liquidation. Liquidation is the finance an immediate or automatic closing of your position and a loss of initial investment. Whenever all the money you put into the trade, all your capital into the trade has been finally wiped out. That is when we say you have been liquidated or that is when liquidation is said to have occurred. Now, what is an entry price? An entry price is the price at which you opened a position. That very price at which you entered a position, that is your entry price. If your entry price is, let's say, $10, Maybe you enter the position at $10, $11, that is your entry price. Okay, if you add it to a position, the entry and the entry price becomes an average. For instance, let's say you, you enter the position at $10, $11, $12. When you add these three different positions and divide it by three, the average you get is your average, what is your average entry position. Then what is the mark price? the price on Binance that controls liquidation. I want you to understand that there is usually a difference if you are already trading futures or if you're new to futures, maybe you've looked at the, the, the layout of the platform, okay? If you look at the display on the platform, you see something like mark price. And then you also discover that there is a difference between the price in the futures account and then and the price in the normal sports market. For instance, assuming Bitcoin is trading at $9,450 in spot market, it's not the same as in futures market. It will have its own different or separate price. Then the price at which it is traded on futures is the mark price, okay? The price on Binance that controls liquidation, a part of the Binance Fair price marking system. Now, the reason why there is usually a difference between the mark price and the normal price of that coin is to, you know, is just to control um, some persons who might decide to manipulate the market. If, if let's say a coin like Zilliqa, Z-I-L, if a coin like ZIL is on Binance futures, and let's say it has the same price as sports, as as sports market, let's say assuming it's let's say 12 cents, a whale, a whale is somebody that has a bigger capital and thus has the advantage of manipulating the price of coins in the market. If a whale comes, a whale might decide to buy up or sell off a huge uh, a huge um, volume of his coin, and then this will lead to a drastic drop in the price of that coin. So when this happens, it will make a whole lot of persons to get liquidated. But then when there is a mark price, this mark price helps to checkmate or to control manipulations in the markets, okay? And then I also want you to understand that this mark price, they don't just come about it hypothetically. It is usually done by aggregating other, the price of the very commodity as traded in other exchanges. If let's say um, Zilliqa, as we used initially, is trading for seven dollars at maybe on Wobi.com exchange, Wobi exchange, and it's trading for like maybe seven dollars twenty cents on KuCoin exchange, and it's trading for like seven dollars fifteen cents on OKS.com exchange. When what the Binance, what the Binance management does, or what the Binance API, or whatever. Um, thing it is they're using to aggregate the price. What it, what it does is that it gets all this price, divides it, and then use, use the average as a price of that Zilliqa on Binance futures. So this is what we know what we know as the mark price, okay? Then what is cross margin? A margin shared across all of the user's positions using the few amount, full amount of funds available in the user's balance. Simply put, a cross margin is a is a situation when you are opening a cross margin it means that whatever capital you have in that account can be used for all of the 
your for all of your all of your, all your positions on that binance assuming you have a capital of hundred dollars and then you want to intend to use let's say twenty dollars to trade let's use the same coin zilica okay and then unfortunately the market goes against you and you're losing instead of you to get liquidated well, what happens is that automatically as your money is going down as your capital is dropping that i mean the 20 dollars you put into the trade into the zilica trade as it is dropping the binance on its own will be taking some money from that your remaining 80 dollars and then be using it to support that your um, zilica trading so that you don't get easily liquidated that is the advantage of cross margin Okay, imagine shared across all of the user's positions, as I just said, using the full amount of funds available in the user's balance. Okay, so let's continue. Then what is an isolated margin? An isolated margin is a margin assigned to the position of a trading pair and is restricted to a certain amount. If one position gets liquidated under its situation, other assets would not be affected what do i mean assuming you still have you're still trading with the hundred dollars capital and then maybe you you intend to, to trade zilica z-i-l okay zil okay and then you are using twenty dollars as your as the amount you're using to trade that zilica and then it happens that market goes against you um you thought market would go up but then it 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 started going down it kept on going down to the extent that you got you got liquidated let's say you're you're already losing like 90 percent of your funds what happens is that your the remaining of your 80 dollars will never be touched it won't be touched at all so once that your 20 dollars to put into that trade finishes that is when you will get margin call in other words you will get liquidated okay so i want you to understand the difference between an isolated margin and a cross margin isolated you are only it is only interested in that very amount to put into that trade but then cross margin if the market is going against you it will be taking money from other of your funds or maybe other of your open positions okay so that is it. I want you to note it because it is very careful. It is very expedient to know about it. Now, let's look at a simple example. Let's say you have an amount of $10,000 and zero BTC and the current price of one BTC is $10,000. Then you buy one BTC for $10,000. You have $10,000 as your capital without any, without any BTC. Then you use that your $10 to buy one BTC one BTC. Now you have one BTC and zero USD. Okay, remember you have 10,000 USD. You used it to buy one BTC. Now you do not have any bit, you do not have any USD, but you have one BTC. Then the next day, the price of one BTC, one BTC rises to $12,000. You, if you now sell that your one BTC for $12,000, you will have 12,000 and zero BTC. In other words, you've made a profit of 20% in your dollars because when you minus 12,000 from the, because the, um, when you minus um, 12,000 from, when you minus 10,000 from 12,000, you will get um, $2,000 as a profit. That is also, that is the 20%, your 20% profit. In other words, um, 12%, 12,000 $12, is 20% of $10,000. This is just what all, all this is all about, okay? Now, this example is easy to understand and it is how we normally view trading, regardless of if you are trading BTC, USD or any other trading price, okay? Let's proceed. But then imagine trading works the same way on a fundamental level. Imagine trading works the same way as, it, as the normal trading on a fundamental level but we have more tools and principles at our disposal. So each general tool and principle will be described as we go ahead, okay? So I said here that this, the course we use the Binance platform and interface for illustrating examples, but the general principle apply to all exchanges. So you can register with my link in case you do not have, um, you do not currently have a Binance Futures account. If you do not have a Binance Futures account, you can use my link. Joe wants to just open it, just put Mr. Solution. That is my referral link. Just this Mr. Solution. That is all that is needed. Once you put Mr. Solution, I become your referral, re referral okay? 
So what is margin trading? Here I said that when you are margin trading, you are taking a position in a currency because you assume that the currency will either increase or decrease in value, just like regular trading. Then you, in margin trading, you can borrow funds that you do not currently own from the exchanges and take larger position in a currency for those funds, which you would not be able to do if trading regularly, okay? Now a common term used for deciding how, how many funds you borrow is called leverage. Like I said, I define leverage as a force multiplier. A leverage helps you to do what ordinarily you cannot do. With leverage trading, you can buy something worth of $20,000, whereas what you have is $2,000. But leverage trading makes you to buy something worth of $20,000, whereas you only have $2,000, okay? So imagine trading, you can make profits in both when the value of the coin you are holding increases or when it decreases, depending on what type of position you took in the you took in the coin, either you took a long or a short position. Remember, to long means to buy low and sell high. To short means to sell high and buy low. Okay, these are two different things. Then margin trading is not without its risk. There is nothing in life that doesn't have a tree. There is nothing in life, especially trading. There is no form of trading that doesn't have its attendant risk, okay? So the higher your leverage, the higher your leverage, so a common term used for deciding how many funds you borrow is called leverage. In margin trading, you can make profits in both when the value of the coin you are trading increases and when it decreases, depending on what type of position you took in the coin, either a long or a short position. I said earlier that to long a position means you're buying low to say high. To short a position means you're saying you're selling high to buy low. So margin trading is not without its risk. The higher your leverage, that those extra funds you borrow from the exchange to take a larger position, the less the price has to fluctuate before your position is lost and your initial investment in the position is also lost. What do I mean? If you are using, let's say, 20x leverage, what it means is that it will, you will get liquidated easily or easier than if you were using a 10x leverage. For instance, you have a capital of $1,000, okay? And then you decide to go trade with 10x leverage. By going with 10x leverage, what it means that your $1,000 will be calculated as though you have $10,000, okay? So if you're going with 20x leverage, what it means that your $1,000 will be calculated as though you have $20,000. And then because of that, you will it gets liquidated easily than you would if you are trading with 10x leverage okay so how do you open a position when making a trade on the margin we call it opening or entering a position if you expect a price of a currency to go up then you want to long that position if you expect the price of a currency to go down you want to open a short position. If BTC is trading at $10,000 and you believe that the price is to increase to $12,000 or more, you open a long position. You could buy at that $10,000 and wait for it to get to $12,000 or $15,000 before selling. Now that is long in a position. But then if BTC is already at $10,000, and after your analysis, you believe that the price of BTC is going to drop, what you would do is that you would sell at that current price because BTC is going to fall. So when you sell there and price eventually starts dropping to, let's say 9,000 or 9,500, you, know, you cannot buy. In other words, you've already made your profit by shorting that position, okay? Assuming the current price, this is, this is actually an example of what I just talked about. Assuming the current price of BTC is $10,000, you expect the price to increase to $11,000. Now, what you do is that you open a long position for a value of $1,000 of your own 
US dollars, okay? Then your entry price would be $10,000 since that is the price at which you opened your position. Now, assuming that the price of BTC increased to $11,000 as you expected, you would then close your position at $11,000 and you would have gained a profit of 10%. Of course, if the price had instead dropped below 10,000, you would have had a loss if you sold. Now, I want you to understand that in trading, you can't say you've lost when you've not sold. If a trade is going against you and you're still holding it, there's still a tendency, or there's still a, a higher chance of the trade going to your favor. As a matter of fact, it is, it, it's, it, it's not that it doesn't happen, but rarely do you buy a coin and it starts going according to that direction you predicted. It will make some little moves in the other way before it, it will now pick up momentum to keep going up. So it's not, though it happens, but not all, all the time. In fact, 90% of the time, anytime you enter a trade, it will go below what your entry position is or was before it is it will now start going to the direction you predicted so that is it so if you now eventually sell at that point when it, it hasn't started going to the to the direction of your prediction you could have already incurred a loss but if you are patient enough and wait for it to start going according to what your chart showed you according to your analysis then that is when you are profitable okay so how do you short a position? Now, assuming the current price of BTC, once again, is $10,000. Now you expect the price to decrease to $9,000. This would be an ideal situation for opening a short position. Now, what this means is that you sell an amount of the currency that you do not own. Remember, you do not have that BTC. You are selling it and buy it back later to close your position. It works exactly like a long position, but then in this case, it is now reversed. Instead of buying low and selling high, you sell high and buy low. I just said it initially. So if the price of BTC decreased to $9,000 as, $9, as you expected, then you would close your position at $9,000 and would have gained a profit of 11.1%. Now, if the price had instead increased above $10,000, you would have had a loss if you closed your position above the $10,000 price. Okay, that is for shorting a position. The principle, the principle can, be, can be hard to understand, actually, since it goes against our normal way of thinking about what you own. Normally, we would say that you can buy a car you do, not, you do not own, and then you own the car. You can then sell the car later, and then it is no longer your car. You can usually not sell a car you do not own and buy it back later. But with margin trading, both scenarios can become very much possible. Okay, now let, this is just a pictorial representation of all I've been saying. I said, if you have trouble understanding the principle, just think about it this way. Long means to buy low and sell high. Short means to sell high and buy low. Now, closing a position, how do you close a position? You've opened a long position when the price of BTC was $10,000. The price has now risen to $12,000. You want to take full profit. Then you would close the entire position and your profit would be 20%. You do not have to close your entire position at once though. You can close parts of your position. If you wish, you could close half your position at $11,000 and half at $12,000, depending of course on what your chart is saying or whichever size you choose. This is called reducing your position. At this point, I want us to understand something. If you, if you are using a higher leverage to trade and you have a higher position, your liquidation will occur sooner. So to extend your liquidation price or your liquidation point, what you would do would be to reduce your position. Assuming we have, we are still using our Zilliqa as our case study, uh, rather as our coin of reference. If you are, let's say you have, um, let's say 2000 Zilliqa that you are trading with 20X leverage, and let's say price is not really going according to your favor, 
and then your liquidation price, maybe let's say you bought it at seven dollars. I'm giving you a hypothetical example. Zilliqa is not yet up to, it's not even up to one dollar. So it's not even up to 50 cents currently. So I'm just using a hypothetical example. Let's say you bought the Zilliqa, you bought um, 2000 Zilliqa with 20x leverage at seven dollars per coin. Okay, 2000 Zilliqa, 2x leverage at seven dollars per coin. Now, assuming your liquidation is at five dollars, you bought it at seven dollars, but your liquidation is at seven dollars, is at five dollars, okay? And then the, um, the coin or the price started going against you. You longed the position, you didn't short it, you longed. You longed it because you bought it at seven, and your intention was to sell it maybe when it gets to um, eight or nine or ten dollars, but unfortunately price started going against you. Remember your liquidation price is seven dollars. So it started instead of going like going higher, the, the price started falling. And now if the price gets to let's say six dollars, you could reduce your position. By reducing your position, I mean you could sell part of it. You could sell what you have is um 2000 Zilliqa. You could sell like 50% of it. That's like 1000 Zilliqa at six dollars. Okay. Then when this happened, when you do that, you, you discover that your liquidation price, which was five thousand five, which which was five dollars, would no longer be five dollars. It could increase to like maybe let's say five point eight or five point seven or five point five, as the case may be. So the more you reduce your position, the higher your liquid, the the more extended your liquidation price is. But then the higher your position, the higher your liquidation price. This is a trick that some persons do not know. So I'm sharing it with you that if a, if if the if a, if a market is going against you and your liquidation price is fast approaching, you can reduce your position to extend your liquidation price. Okay. So leverage. Now, assuming you have ten hundred thousand dollars in your trading account and zero BTC, and the current price of a BTC is ten thousand dollars. You expect the price to increase to eleven thousand dollars. Okay, if you invested all of your hundred thousand dollars, you would have no fiat cash left. If you, I mean, if you used up the hundred thousand dollars you have to trade, you would have no fiat left, you would have nothing left again. Now, that's not a situation most of us would want to be in. Imagine that after you bought one BTC for ten thousand dollars, the price of a BTC dropped to eight thousand dollars. That's that's a that's a, a, a loss, a very big one, so to say, of which many persons might not recover, especially when they use leverage to trade it. Then all your cash would be locked in the trade unless you decide to sell at the loss of twenty five percent or weight, and you do not even know how far this will go you're waiting you do not know when the correction will finish you do not know when it will bounce back okay so you could also invest ten thousand dollars and in the price of a btc of one btc increased to eleven thousand dollars you would have made a profit of ten percent which would be one thousand dollars now for some one thousand dollars might be a lot and, and for some it might be a little so profit is profit, but we want to increase our amount of potential profit without spending more of our funds in a position. Now, this is what leverage does for you. Let's proceed. So with leverage, you are able to increase your position size without putting more of your capital into the position. With leverage, you're able to increase your position size. By position size, I mean you're able to increase your potential trading amount without putting more of your own personal funds into it. So leverage is used as a force, as a multiplier for your own investment into the position. Now, because the exchange allows you to trade, to leverage trade USD directly for BTC. So now you put $10,000 on, on your exchange account. If this was a regular exchange, you would be able to trade for a maximum of $10, which is your total balance. Now, the, the exchange in this example, however, allows you to trade with leverage from, from 1x to 101x. I'm talking about um, Binance. Binance gives you leverage position from 1 to up to 101, or even more, so to say. Okay? So... 
So the, the Binance exchange offers you a leverage from up to 1x to about 101x, okay? So we assume that the current price of a BTC is $10,000, and then you expect the price to increase to $11,000. You are willing to take up a position for 10% of your total balance, which would be a position of $1,000, okay? You are willing to take up a position of 10% 10, 10 of your total balance. Your total balance is $10,000. And then you want to use 10% of that your $10,000 to trade. That means in that trade, you will be using $1,000. That's the 10% 10 10 of your total capital. So you'll be using just $1,000 from your total $10,000 capital now if you use one x leverage your position would just be that that is it would just be one thousand dollars just like normal trade the way you already know it okay but you want to take a bit of a risk to get a higher reward so you use 10x leverage here is what it means your initial investment and maximum potential loss is still one thousand dollars but since your leverage is 10x the total value of your position is actually $10,000. You're using 1,000, you're putting 1,000 into the trade and then you're using 10X leverage. 10X, you simply get it by multiplying, multiplying the amount you're putting into the trade by 10. So if you multiply 1,000 by 10, you'll be getting $10,000, okay? So the, the total value of your position is actually $10,000 since you multiply your investment of $1,000 by 10. So to put it simply, you risk only $1,000, but the profit or loss on your order becomes multiplied by 10 since the other value is 10 times higher. Let's go on. So liquidation. When you trade without leverage, there is usually no liquidation price. When you are not using leverage to trade, when you're just trading, doing the normal trading, you're not using leverage, you do not have any, any anything like liquidation. You are, not, you are not liquidated at all. So if you went up to a regular exchange, if you went to a regular exchange like Binance and bought one BTC at the market price of $7,000 and it went to $0, then that one BTC would worth $0, but you will still own that BTC. If you bought BTC at $7,000 and the price kept on falling till it got to $0, what it means is that you still have that your one BTC and that your one BT is still worth zero dollars and it could rise above seven thousand dollars again someday probably. So assume the current market price is around seven thousand dollars and you believe it will increase to eight thousand dollars. You want to open a long position with a cost of one thousand USD and 10x leverage. That would mean a total value of ten thousand dollars. However, in the total other value of $10,000, only $1,000 are your own cost and risk, okay? You, 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 you made a trade that is worth $10,000. And then that trade is only $1,000, your $1,000 that, that is actually involved in it. That is what leverage helps you to experience. Then the remaining $9,000, you have effectively borrowed from the exchange and the remaining $9,000 that, that you added up to make up for $10,000 was given to you by the exchange. Now, this, is, this also means that your own cost in percentage is only 10% of the other when using 10x leverage. So the price dropped to a point where the total other value is less than approximately $9,000. This would mean a drop of approximately 10% when using 10x leverage. If the price drops to a point where the total value order is less than approximately $9,000, this, this would be a drop of approximately 10% when using 10x leverage, then your order would be automatically closed and you would have lost your $1,000. This is called liquidation. Please get this very part very well because most persons do not know what causes their liquidation or how they get liquidated. If the price 
drops to a point where the total order value is less than what what that very amount that the exchange gave to you this would be that in other words if it dropped to about 10 percent of what that your leverage is or rather was then your order would be automatically closed and you have lost your one thousand dollars that's the capital you put into the trade now this is what we call liquidation the approximation of 10 percent when using the approximation of 10 percent when using 10x leverage is only an approximation it's just an approximation so it's always check what the actual liquidation price is it's not always 10 percent could be 10.2 could be 10.3 so but here we just um, approximated it okay so if your leverage had been 1000x instead of 10x the liquidation price will be much closer to your entry price let's say you are using 100x to trade what it means is that just a little move just one percent move against you would get you liquidated okay if the price moves just say one percent against the price but at the direction or, or the position you predicted, your account will automatically get wiped. In other words, you would get liquidated. So like I said, the higher your leverage, then the sooner, sooner your liquidation price comes. So avoid choosing a very high leverage until you are comfortable with leverage trade. Do not be take because of greed to go and use a leverage that is far higher or whose li liquidation price is very close. Do not use greed, do not allow greed to overwhelm you, okay? So how do you calculate profit and loss? Recall our definition of both the other cost and other value. The other value is a number that, that profit and losses are calculated from. So that, so that is what we'll focus on at this point, okay? Example, the current price of BTC is $10. You expect the price to rise to $12,000. Now you place an order with an order cost of one BTC with 10X leverage. That would mean, that would mean an order value of approximately 10 BTC. Now assume that the price rises to $12,000 as you expected. That is a profit of 20 percent so we use the other value to calculate the actual profit. we use the other value to calculate the actual profit the other value was 10 btc and 20 percent of 10 btc is 2 btc so in this example your profit would be 2 btc BTC. Now, assuming that instead of the price rising as you expected from $10,000 to $12,000, it drops to $9,500 instead, that would be a loss of approximately 5.2%. So again, we use the other value to calculate that loss. 5% of 10 BTC is 0 0.52 BTC. So your actual loss would be 0 0.52 BTC if you decided to sell and take the loss. Of course, it does not become a loss until you actually close the position or get liquidated. I talked about this earlier, but this is just an example to show how the loss is calculated. So the higher the leverage, the higher the other value compared to the other cost. This means larger profit, but also larger losses are more risk of getting liquidated. We will continue on the next episode.